live stream. It's uh, it works great. I've when I haven't been here, I've watched it at home and really enjoyed it. Uh, put it on TV. It's it's pretty darn cool. But uh, glad to get a chance to to be here. And you say all 14 games, and I'm just tickled to get a chance to be a part of it because this is a special tournament and just a fun atmosphere all week now that we are officially getting started. Yeah, had to get pushed back a day due to the weather yesterday with all of the schools being out because of the ice storm that mainly was a factor in the morning, but a lot of schools have rules where if you don't have school, no extracurriculars, that sort of thing, I think the right decision was made to kind of adjust the schedule as they have and uh, push back this this game to 5 o'clock tonight between Cowden Herrick, Beecher City, and Neoga. It'll be followed up with Altamont taking on Windsor Stu Straws and Dietrich versus South Central. Those were originally slated to be the Wednesday games. They moved them to tonight to allow the winner of this game to have a little rest before they have to take on top-seeded St. Anthony. So that St. Anthony game pushed back to tomorrow night as well as St. Elmo, Brownstown, and North Clay. So those are your adjustments to the schedule if you haven't had a chance to make them yet. But the bottom line is, is all the games are going to get in. It's going to be a great week of basketball, and we're looking forward to it. Yeah, just looking at that forecast, yesterday was the only day that should cause us any problems. The smooth sailing from here on out. And hey, it wouldn't be a National Trail Conference Tournament Week if you didn't at least have to worry about a little bit of winter weather somewhere in there. And hopefully it's behind us. Well, we'll come back with more information on the pregame show as we get the National Trail Conference Boys Tournament underway here on Classic Hits 97.9 XFM. Hi, this is Kathy from Bartle Lock and Security. Secure your home or business with a customized system from us. Good luck, area teams in the tournament. Compass Advisory Group is here to guide you in the right direction for all of your investment and insurance needs. Contact Kurt Strohmeyer or Corey McDaniel at 217-347-9697. Person-to-person -person money transfer. Easy, the way it should be. Learn more at CrossroadsBank.com. Crossroads Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Video and audio streaming of the 2024 National Trail Conference Tournament is proudly presented by Premier Broadcasting, 97.9 XFM and KJ Country 102.3. This is the Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota pregame show. For all your transportation needs, see Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota as they celebrate 65 years of serving the area. Six minutes showing on the clock as we get set for this uh, matchup between Cowden Herrick, Feature City, and Neoga. As this is the play-in game matchup between the eighth-seeded Cowden Herrick, Feature City uh, Bobcats and the Neoga Indians as these two teams will be fighting for the right to kind of get into the tournament in a sense as they will earn the opportunity to play St. Anthony with a victory. Now, they will still play games should they fall in this one. They will actually drop to a Thursday night 5 o'clock game uh, where they play the loser of that Alamont windsor Sioux straws matchup. And uh, then if whoever loses that game is out after a couple of games. But uh, we'll just have to see how it works for these two, these two clubs. You know, admittedly, you're the 8-9 seeds in one of the toughest 1A conferences in the state. Uh, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Not a bad team necessarily, but in this conference, it's hard to stand out. Well, you know, not to not to write anybody off against St. Anthony, uh, whoever should win this. But it's going to be a really tough mm -hmm. matchup, obviously. St. Anthony is the number one team in the state in Class 1A. But uh, I do think that even if one of these, even if these teams, you know, end up in that consolation side of the bracket, even at 8 and 9, there's every opportunity for them to make some noise and, and be playing above their seed on Saturday. Uh, both both clubs have some really nice players. It's just a matter of putting it all together. I think in particular, the SCHBC, you know, they're, they've, they've hovered right around 500 this season, mm -hmm. and 
and they've got some players who have been around for a long time, uh, you know, playing some varsity ball and contributing and putting points on the board. And I know Coach Thompson is happy with where they're at right now. They just got a nice double overtime win over South Central. And then for Nioga, you know, it's more a case of we got to find we got to find consistent scoring. We got to turn a corner. And you never know when high school kids are going to turn that corner. Maybe it's this week. I remember, I remember Brady Reynolds kind of having a coming yep. out party at the NTC tournament a couple of years ago. So you never know who's going to to find their stride at what point in the season. And even though the wins have been difficult for Neoga to come by this year, maybe there's that kid that's been waiting in the wings who will finally who will finally decide to embrace a scoring role here on this Altamont floor. And NTC week is a fine week to make uh, yourself a, uh, put, a, put yourself into the spotlight here in front of a big crowd at this gymnasium that is starting to fill up for a 5 o'clock ball game. We'll come back with some more free game information as we get you set for Neoga and Cowden Eric Beecher City on Classic Hits 97.9 XFM. Stay protected with vaccinations from Andy's Health Mart Pharmacy in Effingham. They offer convenient RSV, flu, and COVID-19 vaccinations that fit your schedule. Because getting vaccinated doesn't just protect you, it protects your family and community. Walk in today, there's no appointment necessary and most insurances are accepted. Visit Andy's Health Mart Pharmacy at 805 West Fayette in Effingham. Health Mart, taking the time to listen and care. Is it true you're a master negotiator? I did recently negotiate a ridiculously low price on 80 factory fresh deluxe comfort systems. Now you sell them at a profit. No. No? Instead, when you buy an AC at the regular price, you'll get a brand new, fully warrantied, highly efficient furnace for just $2,009. That's a savings of $1,867. Yeah. Troy, is it true you once installed an air conditioner in an igloo? I can be very persuasive. Jansen's Heating. Com. Cold January weather makes me crave soup, vegetable beef, cream of chicken, chili, cream of broccoli, cream of potato, or just a few of the flavors we make from scratch here at Niemerg's. Did you know that Brian Custer and my brother Luke make an average of 25 gallons of chili and 45 gallons of vegetable beef soup every week? We offer our soups on our salad bar, in the brass rail and coffee shop, or for carryout. Hi, this is Kathy from Barlow Lock and Security. Secure your home or business with a customized system from us. Good luck, area teams in the tournament. Compass Advisory Group is here to guide you in the right direction for all of your investment and insurance needs. Contact Kurt Strohmeyer or Corey McDaniel at 217-347-9697. Person-to-person -person money transfer. Easy the way it should be. Learn more at CrossroadsBank.com. Crossroads Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. It's a practice. Come see all the new and exciting Chevrolet and Toyota vehicles here at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, South Route 45 in Effingham, or shop and buy 24-7 at danheck.com. Diedrich Bank is proud to sponsor the NTC Tournament. Diedrich Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Since 1937, Geckner Brothers has been proud to support local and area teams, and that continues with this year's NTC Tournament. Best of success area teams from the family at Geckner Brothers. Heartland Human Services is proud to sponsor the NTC Tournament. Your physical and mental health are similar. Take care of both for a happy, healthy life. If you've got a passion for helping others, apply today at heartlandhs.org. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. For over 30 years, SPS has been providing care to the surrounding area. Specializing in around-the-clock and hourly care, we focus on in-home and nursing home care. If you need help with your loved ones, call Mitchell or Sherry today at 217-690-3240. Tom Henderson State Farm Insurance helps people manage the risk of everyday life, recover from the unexpected, and help you realize your dreams. Contact Tom Henderson today. 
Washington Savings Bank is here for you through every stage of life. Video and audio streaming of the 2024 National Trail Conference Tournament is proudly presented by Premier Broadcasting. Thanks for watching the NTC Tournament. Provided by Premier Broadcasting, 97.9 XFM and KJ Country 102.3. Or meet with our experts at one of our locations to learn about all we have to offer in making your dreams become your reality. Washington Savings Bank, located in Effingham, Mattoon, Lerna, and anywhere online at WashingtonSavings.net or on our banking app. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Getting set for the 88th Annual National Trail Conference Tournament to begin with the 8-9 matchup here on this Tuesday evening. Dustin White will have the play-by-play -play and introduce you to the starting lineup. All right. Thank you very much, Matt Robinson. Uh, number nine seed, Nioga, going to be the visiting team on the scoreboard tonight. Andrew Snow's club, 5-14 and 14 overall. They're 0-6 in National Trail Conference regular season play. They're going to have a 6-2 senior, James Bullock. He wears jersey number 12. He'll be in the starting lineup, averaging three and a half points a game. He'll be joined by a 6'2 junior, Landon Titus. Landon wears number 13, averages 6.3 points per game. He can heat up from the three-point line occasionally. Uh, Luke Keller, number 15, he's a 6'4 junior, also right around six points a game. Uh, Braden Letterly, a 5'10 junior, he wears number 21, 4.8 points a game for him. And the leading scorer... It's the senior, 6'2", Trey Sheehan. He wears number 23. He is at uh, just a touch under 12 points per game for the Indians. And, again, he's one of their holdovers in the starting lineup from a year ago. Coach Tanner Thompson and the Calvin Herrick Beecher City Bobcats. They're the number 8 seed with a 9-11 and 11 record overall, 2-3 and three in NTC play, including a win over Nioga earlier this year. Carson Evans, a 5'8 senior, he wears number three and averages three points per game. Clayton Wojcik, he is a 6'3 senior, wearing number four, 13.8 points a game for him. Caden Callum, a 5'8 junior, he wears number 12 and averages 10.8 points per game. And A.J. Radloff, a 6'1 junior, wearing number 14, he averages 9.3 points per game. Finally, another guy averaging right around double figures, it's a six foot senior, Gage Lort. He wears number 22. And he is at 10.2 points per game. So you look at that uh, Bobcats lineup, Matt, and the first thing you see is four guys all around double figures. So nice, even balance, which can defensively make you a tough team to deal with sometimes. Always a challenge when you have that sort of situation as we're getting set for the tip as it's going to be Travis Wyatt tossing it in the air. And it is CHBC who controls it. The Bobcats will bring the ball up the floor to begin this game. Wojcik with it now on the wing up to Caden Callum up top. He feeds it into the high post. That's Radloff with it, trying to go around Sheehan. Sheehan cuts him off to the basket, but there's a cutter to the rim, and putting up the shot around the bucket is Gage Lorton. He can't make it go, but that's because he was fouled. Good move, good cut to the rim by Lorton right there, and a good job by Callum finding him there. Yeah, nice find. Sends uh, Keller to the free throw, or sends the Beecher City Bobcats, Gage Lorton to the free throw line on the foul by Luke Keller. Obviously, the first in the tournament. First free throw also good for Lorton, so the senior sinks the first of two, gives the Bobcats a quick one nothing lead. And he will not make the second, but an offensive rebound oh. and a putback missed by Radloff. Point blank, he could not get that one to go, and literally gets the rebound for Nioga. So it'll be Titus walking the ball up the floor for the Indians on their opening possession. He hands off to Letterly. Letterly at the top now. Looks for Bullock in the corner, but instead gets it back out top to Titus. They'll swing it around. Keller had it, now back to Titus, now back to Keller in the corner. They're playing catch. Titus has it. They'll swing it around to Letterly on the opposite corner. Bullock has it right now. They're playing four out. Just kind of sort of working it around the perimeter as it does appear to be 1-2-2 two, two zone for CHBC. Matt tells me. And Trey Sheehan puts up the first shot as he Ooh. was able to get into the paint a little bit, but that one... Hits the rim and falls no good. Rebound comes down to Evans for the Bobcats, and he'll get it to Wojcik, who walks it across midcourt. Nioga's in a man-to-man -man defensively, and Bobcats did some good cut in that first trip. We'll see what happens here. Wojcik has it right now. He's working on Sheen again. Gets it over in the corner to Evans. Now they bounce it into Wojcik in the paint. He really wants to post up on Sheen. Has the ball stripped away as he went to the rim and then dribbled it off his own foot. 
out of bounds on the baseline. That'll be a turnover for the South Cats and the Yoga basketball. So we have our first turnover of the ball game now as well in a one nothing contest. Yoga will get it inbounded against some full court pressure for the Bobcats. Looks like just a little bit of token pressure there as Weatherly gets the ball and is able to get across midcourt unimpeded. He has it right now. Gets it over to, to, uh, <laughs> to uh, sorry, I got some type from it there. Weatherly in the corner now, and he has it back. Bottom line is they're just sort of working it around the perimeter. Now they got it to Sheehan at the free throw line. Kicks it out in the corner. Bullock, an open three-pointer. That one's off the front iron. Goes on the opposite side on the weak side. Out of bounds. Batted away by a Neoga jersey. So it will be Bobcat basketball. Yeah, it was a good job of getting the ball inside against the zone. And then a nice kick out for the open shot. It just didn't happen. But if Neoga is able to continue that, they're going to get some good looks. Could not get Landon Titus's name out of my mouth for some reason on that trip. We'll try to do better for for him, but right now it's Bobcat basketball. Tough shot in the paint. Yeah. Morton misses it, and it's Bullock with the rebound. That was a very tough look. It's still one nothing. CHBC. Two minutes into this first quarter, Bullock going all the way to the rim and gets the righty layup to go. A little off balance there, but he gives Nyoga its first lead, two one. A hesitation move kind of froze the defender, and he just took that second step and laid it up and in. It barely crawled over the basket, but it did. But look, another guy who has had big games for the past, in the past for Nyoga is on the other end. It's an open three-pointer, high off the rim for Callum, but the offensive rebound, Wojcik had good position, and he gets the offensive board as he tries for the putback. He was fouled, and so far, CHBC doing some pretty good work on the offensive glass. Yeah, and, you know, we say it's tough to box out against the zone, but Nyoga's in a man-to-man, and the Bobcats are still finding opportunities on the glass. That foul whistled against Bullock will be his first and the team's second. Wojcik makes the first of two free throws, so he ties this game up at two apiece. He'll have one more. He is the leading scorer for this Bobcat team. Senior averaging just under 14 a game. Sizes up that second free throw. It's a two-for-two two trip for Clayton, and it's three-to-two Bobcat. He used to wear a big headband in, the, in years past, but now he's not donning that and it's almost throwing me off he's still got the flow though yeah. he's still got some pretty good long hair going there just no no headband a couple other guys in white jerseys are wearing them right now as yoga's got it literally nice. looking for sheehan in the post good feed flashing across the lane goes trey sheehan and he gets his first bucket of the night his layup gets yoga back in the lead four to three i think the bobcats had switched to man to man and if so yoga did a great job of recognizing it and getting the cutter open inside the HBC with the ball, the one-point deficit. They're trying to bounce it in high post. That's Wojcik with it. He's holding high. Radloff, rather. By mistake, Radloff now oh, nice. jumps down. That's Wojcik. Radloff fed Wojcik. Who went, they went high-low, and Clayton Wojcik's got four, and it's 5-4 to four CHBC. That really was a pretty pass. Wasn't much room for that, and a good catch in there as well as the Bobcats are back to the zone. Weatherly with it over to Titus. Titus takes Whoa. a very deep three and missed everything. That one hit the backboard, but nothing else. Rebound came down to Radloff. They'll push it ahead. Nice feed from Callum to Wojcik on the weak side. Just a lob pass, and Clayton Wojcik's got six, and it's a three-point lead for CHBC. Great transition basketball. Yeah, and they, they love to get out and run when they have the chance, and they did a good job of it there. Midway through this first quarter, Yoga trying to pass it across the top. Ball was kicked. That'll be a dead ball. A couple of subs in for Nyoga as Bullock and uh, Bullock and Keller take a seat. They will get uh, Gavin Ray into the game for the first time. He's a 6'1 junior. And another junior, Carter Young. He stands 5'10". He's out there. Young thought about a three-pointer on the wing there. Now gets it to Ray in the corner. Ray bounces back out to Young. Young looks for a week, for a cutter and literally could never get position, though. His shot is no good, but Trey Sheehan does a good job with a strong side rebound as he was going back up. He was fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, Sheehan was strong on the boards, understood that there was a good opportunity for a a look inside, but the defense collapsed down on Letterly, so he was just able to clean up the glass, draw the first foul of the ball game against A.J. Radloff and the Bobcats. Trey Sheehan rattles the first free throw home. Gets Nyoga within a couple. He'll have one more here with 3.42 left on the first quarter clock. Right-hander puts that one up, and it's nothing but net. He's got four. He'll go back within one, seven to six. Wojcik walking the ball up the floor. He's got Letterly waiting for him as he gets across midcourt. Gets it over on the wing. That's Callum. Now they get it to the free-throw line. 
That's Radloff who's looking again to put a move on Sheehan. That's a good battle between them. Instead, it's Gage Lorton who tries a strong move in the paint. His shot is no good. The battle for the rebound between uh, Lorton and Sheehan goes out of bounds, apparently, off the CHPC player. Now, Lorton, wanting to post up, uses strength advantage down inside, but he just didn't have enough touch to get that shot to fall, and then he tapped it out of bounds. So, Nyoga with a chance to get back out in front in this back-and-forth first quarter. They've got the ball. Right now, it's Letterly with it. Bounces the pass to Sheehan, who throws a skip pass over to Titus. Now in the corner to Ray, back to Titus. Titus over to Young. Young now dumps it down into Ray in the post. Good catch. High off the glass. He makes the shot as he was fouled. So, Yoga has found that cutter a couple of times. And that time, it's Gavin Ray who gets the shot to go. He'll have a chance for a three-point play. And Yoga is sneaking people behind that zone defensively. And the passing has been crisp and on point even though it's been from a pretty good distance away that allows the opportunity for the shot inside. And that's a big foul early in this contest as well as it's whistled on Radloff. It's the team's second and Radloff's second for the Bobcat. Ray makes the free throw to make it a three-point play and getting Yoga out front 9-7. to seven. Getting into the game for CHBC was Wyatt Ruff. He is a 6'3 junior, and he replaces Radloff in the, in the lineup now. No, Radloff stayed in the game. I thought he would have come out, but no, he's in there, and he went right to the rim there with his two fouls and gets himself back to the free throw line. So, so far, Nyoga has fouled the shooter a lot in this first quarter. Yeah, just a little screen and roll there between Wojcik and Radloff, and Radloff benefits with the opportunity at the line on the first foul of the ball game for Nioga's Carter Young. So it's three fouls for Nioga with 244 to play in the first quarter. It's actually Lorton who took a seat for the Bobcats as uh, Radloff missed the first free throw. His second one is good. So he's got the one-for-two trip. Gets the Bobcats back within one, nine-to-eight, and he'll the lead with the basketball. First quarter action at this NTC tournament, and it's been a close one so far. Over in the corner, that's Gavin Ray. Dribbles a couple of times, now bounces back out to Carter Young. Titus over to Letterly in the corner. They were looking to a flashing Sheehan, but he was covered up. Now they get him on the opposite side of the lane. He takes a couple of dribbles across the paint, puts up the short jumper. Trey Sheehan makes it. He's got six. Yoga up three, 11 to eight. Whenever they're able to get the ball into the middle to him, good things have happened. He's either scored or he's kicked it out to open shooters. And then if he can continue to do that, Yoga will continue to capitalize. Now there's a good feed Ooh. in there from Radloff into Clayton Wojcik. Clayton Wojcik's got eight points already as he found his way to the bucket. And uh, CHBC back within one. Yeah, uh, Wojcik, three for three from the field and two for two at the line thus far. You'll take it. <laughs> Under two minutes to go in this first quarter, Neogo with the ball in the one-point lead. Young gets it over to Ray. It's a dangerous Ooh. pass in the corner, but Ray able to collect it. Now throws a high pass over to Young, kind of disjointed here. Braden Letterly catches in the opposite corner, bounces one back out for Landon Titus. But uh, it was a little off the mark so far. Neogo, the passes haven't been crisp this possession and now they almost throw it in the backcourt saved by Titus the busted possession leads to an open three-pointer in the corner for Letterly he misses and the rebound comes down to Evans for CHBC so it wasn't uh, mm. it wasn't a clean possession but it led to an open look and then on the other end looking to drive to the basket is Caden Callum and if he was back and Titus down Titus reached yeah it's going to be Titus's first and the team's fourth the yoga has spread their four fouls around four different players 115 to go in the first quarter and THPC will be in the bonus for those last 75 seconds as they get it inbounded on the baseline. Over on the wing, now they get it in the corner. That's an open three for Callum, and he hits it. Caden Callum's first three points of the night, and it gets CHBC back out front, 13-11. to 11. Off the lead changes mm-hmm. in this first quarter. Good ball movement there for the Bobcats. Led to the open shooter in the corner, and Callum buried it. 50 seconds to go in this first quarter, and Yogo with the ball. Long time to try to kill clock. I don't know if they'll go for the last one or not. I wouldn't think so unless it just happens to work out that way. Instead, they almost turn it over, getting it to Sheen in the high post, but he's able to collect it. And then as he was backing down Wyatt Ruff, a foul comes in. I don't know if it was on that play or if it was away from the basket. No, it was Wyatt Ruff. He got called for a little bit too much of a push on Sheehan as the Bobcats again were in a man-to-man that trip, trying to mix the defenses against the Yoga Indians. So with 38.9 seconds to go, Letterly will throw it inbound. He just throws high out top to Sheehan, who hands off to Titus. Titus dribbles to his right. He's telling people where to go, and now he backs it back out to the volleyball line. Gets it to Letterly in the corner out to the wing. Letterly over to Ray, trying to trying to run a little two-man game there. It doesn't work, so he'll get back out top to Titus. He'll reset things for 20 seconds to go. Sheehan on the wing. He's trying to drive on 
on the instead gets it into Letterly. His lefty layup is no good. Fight for the rebound, and eventually it comes down in the hands of a white jersey. That's Caden Cal. He pushes it ahead, and as Carson Evans was trying to go to the basket, Carter Young, in an attempt to block off his pass, bumped him, and that blocking foul with 6.7 seconds to go will put CHBC on the line for two. Yeah, and it's going to be the second foul on Carter Young as well. So, yeah, costly foul in a lot of ways there for Neoga. They trail by two, and they give a pretty easy opportunity at the line now for CHBC and Carson Evans. James Bullock going to check in after this first free throw, almost certainly for Young. The initial free throw for Carson Evans is no good, so he's still... Hasn't scored yet. Also sitting down is Letterly for the Indians. And returning to the fray is Luke Keller, the 6'4 junior. About as much size as they have. Second free throw for Evans is good. So he goes one for two. Gets CHBC back out three, 14-11. Yoga has 6.7 seconds. They're trying to go the length of the court. Bullock catches it. He's trapped, then throws it out of bounds. So with 2.9 seconds left, CHBC is going to be able to inbound on its own end of the floor. And Yoga's first turnover, but it's a bad one. Yeah, but the ten- turnovers have been one apiece in the first quarter. Great numbers, although that one comes at a bad time. Evans will inbound, and before he does that, Tanner Thompson, the CHBC coach, says we want timeout. So we'll take a 30-second break. 2.9 seconds to go in this first quarter. It's CHBC 14, Yoga 11. Play-in game of the National Trail Conference Tournament on 97.9 XFM. Hi. Tom Henderson State Farm Insurance helps people manage the risk of everyday life, recover from the unexpected, and help you realize your dreams. Contact Tom Henderson today. Video and audio streaming of the 2024 National Trail Conference Tournament is proudly presented by Premier Broadcasting, 97.9 XFM and KJ Country 102.3. seconds. CHBC has it inbounded. Tough shot, though. They didn't get a very good look out of that timeout. They called a timeout to try to draw something up. Clayton Wojcik got a very contested shot from the top of the key, left it really short, and CHBC will have to settle for a three-point lead after a quarter. So eight minutes in the books, and it is Calden Herrick, Beecher City, with a three-point lead over Neoga. It's 14-11, to opening game of the NTC tournament, and you're listening to it here on 97.9 XFM. Did you? Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. Person-to-person money transfer. Easy, the way it should be. Learn more at CrossroadsBank.com. Crossroads Bank. Equal housing lender. Member FDIC. Video and audio streaming of the 2024 National Trail Conference Tournament is proudly presented by Premier Broadcasting, 97.9 XFM and KJ Country 102.3. All right, back at Altamont, 14 to 11. CHBC leads in yoga in this NTC tournament playing game. They're already back in action out there on the floor but matt robinson's got stats from that first quarter and we'll give him a chance at some point to let you know for the indian now breaking him down into the rim that's a good move to the basket for james bullock He's got four points, and Yoga back within one, 14 to 13. Well, Braxton Hall into the ball game, paying dividends, making a couple of nice passes and getting teammates set up, and that's kind of what the big man does. Yeah, absolutely. Braxton Hall will never score for this Yoga team, but he will make some good passes. Three-pointer for Wojcik is off the remark. And then as uh, Keller got the rebound for Yoga, he was bumped by a CHBC player, which would give Matt a chance to tell us a little bit about the stats in that first quarter. CHBC, four of eight from the field. They were... Six of eight at the free throw line, make it rather five of eight at the free throw line, grab seven rebounds to Neoga's three. Each team with one turnover in that first quarter as Neoga was four of nine from the field, three of three at the line, oh of two from three-point range. Count and Herrick Beecher City's one of three. CHBC going to ratchet up some full-court pressure, and Neoga has trouble getting it inbound. 
Duke Keller was looking for Landon Titus, but uh, Bobcat got a hand on it, knocked it out of bounds. Now Keller will have to inbound from the corner here. The CHPC going to try to force a few more turnovers. Mm -hmm. But uh, Nyoga gets it inbounded to Titus, and after he is able to catch, they kind of clear out. So he'll get it across midcourt, hands to Bullock. Bullock working on his man, spins around at the top, now crosses over, still working on him. Now hands off to Ray. Ray picks up at the top of the key, looking for a teammate, gets it to Keller out top. Now Bullock with it, looking for a screen perhaps. No, just looking to go to the rim. And James Bullock, hey, he has broken him down, going to the basket three times and got three buckets. He's got six in yoga back out front by one, 15 to 14. Not going to say the offense looked smooth, but all of a sudden Bullock found the lane again and got the bucket. So he's got six, Nyoga up one. Now Wyatt Ruff in the paint. Turnaround shot. That's a tough look. He misses, but a good offensive rebound for Wojcik. As he looked to go back up, had the ball stripped away from him, recollected it, and then was fouled on his shot at tip. So it's back to the free throw line for the Bobcats. Yeah, and they've done a good job of being on the offensive glass, giving themselves extra opportunities. And uh, that foul is the second for Nioga's Luke Keller as it's the team's first this quarter. By the way, didn't mention that Wyatt Ruff Riot, Wyatt Ruff had missed or had committed the first foul in the quarter for Neoga and it, or for CHBC rather, and it's his second in the ball game. So Wojcik made the first free throw, tied this game at 15. His second one is short though, but another offensive rebound. Now Lorton has it, and his putback is good. It was a tough shot, but again, CHBC killing Yoga on the offensive glass. Lorton's got three, and the Bobcats are up two, 17 to 15. Just into this second quarter, Bullock trying to go left this time. They cut that off, and then he's bounced. He's bumped mm. out there by Ruff out beyond the three-point line. Wasn't even looking to make a move, and why Ruff just picked up his third foul. So he came in replacing Radloff, essentially, with a couple of fouls. Now Radloff has to come in to replace him. Radloff with two will be playing while Ruff sits with three. Those are the fouls that the Bobcats have thus far. On Yoga will have to see if they can use that situation to their advantage here. They've got the ball. They're down two. It's Braden Letterly working on his man. Gets the chin now to Bullock in the corner. He dribbles back out to the wing. Decides to pull back for a three. And James Bullock is feeling it. Yeah. Now he's hitting the triples. He's got nine. And Yoga back out front, 18 to 17, as we continue to go back and forth in this first half. He's four for four from the field. They just laid off of him. And the Bobcats have gone man to man here lately. And uh, Yoga figured it out. Now they get it down into Lorton, and he was trying to back down Keller. And Keller gave a little bit of ground. Lorton lost his footing, shuffled the pivot foot, and traveled. Yeah, I don't know if uh, Lorton wasn't expecting the, the movement there from the defender. as, Like you say, he just took an extra step as he was working inside. Keller takes a seat. I think it was Gavin Gray who gets back in the game for the yoga. They inbound the ball. Bullock has it. He's going to work against Evans, who put some man pressure on him full court, but he was able to beat him down the floor. Bullock still has it. Picked it up now just inside the elbow. Now gets it over to Ray. He dribbles through some traffic. Picks up the free throw line. Almost traveled. Mm -hmm. Now gets it to Titus way out top. Titus will reset things. Gets it to Ray on the right wing. He hasn't made a move yet. Still can't. Now gets it over to Sheehan. Sheehan dribbles over to the right wing. All this happening on the right side of the court. Hands to Bullock. Bullock going back to the rim. But Ooh. he ran into a man, tried to pass to Sheehan, and the pass is picked off by Wojcik. Yoga's first turnover. Wojcik goes end to end for the layup. He's the first man in double figures. He's got 11, and the Bobcats back out one. Yeah, they were flirting with disaster there as there was almost a foul inside. And now the Bobcats have gone to a 1-3-1 one, one zone. And they just get a steal there. Wojcik with another takeaway and again goes end to end. Two straight breakaway layups off the turnover for Wojcik. He's got 13. CSBC back up three. Neoga takes the timeout. 439 to go before halftime. It's Cowden Harris Beecher City 21. Yoga 18. Opening game of the National Trail Conference Boys Basketball Tournament on 97.9 XFL. Hi, this is Kathy from Bartle Lock and Security. Secure your home or business with a customized system from us. Good luck, area teams in the tournament. Video and audio streaming of the 2024 National Trail Conference Tournament is proudly presented by Premier Broadcasting, 97.9 XFM and KJ Country 102.3.
Well, Nioga had taken an 18-17 lead, and then they turned it over twice. Clayton Wolchick with a couple breakaway steals and layups. And all of a sudden, the Bobcats back up three, so Matt and Yoga used their first time out there. Bobcats keep mixing up the defenses. The one three ones worked the last two times with steals, and they are still in it now after the timeout. It's Landon Titus working against that one three one gets all the way out to midcourt, bounces the pass along the midcourt line to Bullock, who will go up to the wing, goes to the rim, and another nifty move to the basket. James Bullock playing with some confidence right now. He averages 3.6 points per game, but he just drew a foul on the shot there, so he'll go to the free throw line for two. And it's Radloff picking up the foul. Now he has his third to go along with Russ third. That position basically on the court has picked up six fouls, all of them for the Bobcats, and we'll see what uh, Coach Thompson elects to do in this spot. Bullock hits the first of two free throws. He's got 10. Getting into the game for CHBC for the first time is August Kosark a 5'9 sophomore. He sees some time here and there, but definitely not an every game player, but with that foul trouble, they're having to dig a little bit deeper. Second free throw for Bullock is also good. Two for two trip for him. He's got 11. He'll go within one. It's 21-20. Two for two at the free throw line, three for three from the field, and one for one from beyond the arc. He's doing all right. Is the 6'2 senior for Nioga. He's got them in this ball game. They're down a point. CHPC has that single-digit lead and the basketball. Carson Evans has it out top. Now gets it to Cosart. Back right back to Evans. Way out away from the basket. They're just waiting for something to materialize offensively. They're just sort of playing catch around the perimeter. Cosart bounces a pass high post to Callum. Callum now dumps it in, and he gets it into the hands of Clayton Wojcik, who backs his man down, puts it in off the glass, and draws the foul. And listen, CHBC is definitely winning the physical battle in the paint. Will they be able to keep doing it as the foul pile up? I don't know, but right now Clayton Wojcik is doing a great job. Well, Nioga is spreading their fouls around a little better, as Letterly just picked up his first. Wojcik misses the free throw, so the three-point play does not materialize for him. Bullock with a rebound, but still Clayton Wojcik with 15 points. Mm -hmm. CHBC back up three. Nobody's led this game by more than three. Letterly trying to tie it up from the corner there, missed a three-pointer. Rebound to Evans, pushes it up to Wojcik, and Wojcik... Gets a charge called on him, a little bit of a player control foul. He took the outlet pass, went against the Nioga defense, and put his shoulder down. Uh, he didn't have to do it either. He extended that arm out and kind of forced one of the Nioga by, defenders by him, but neither defender that was around him was in a good position. Right. So Wojcik commits the foul. It's just his first and only Calvin Herrick Beecher City's second turnover of the quarter. It is their fourth foul, though, so three yeah. minutes, 15 seconds. Nioga will oh. be in the bonus here. You saw Titus think about a long three-pointer. Instead, they work it down in the corner. Ray pulls the trigger from the corner. It's off the rim, no good. And the fight for the rebound goes out of bounds off of a white jersey. So Nioga will keep it on their end of the floor, down three. Well, with the Bobcats having their big guys in foul trouble, Wojcik's kind of gone inside, and that's kind of been a good matchup for them down there as well. Wojcik is just pretty much the best athlete on the court, and he's out at the point of that 1-3-1 defense now. Yoga gets it inbounded, although they had to throw it in the backcourt to do so. Get it to Sheehan, high post, thinking about driving. Instead, gets it out to Letterly. Oh. Letterly's three-pointer in and out. But Trey Sheehan with the offensive rebound, he puts it back up and in. Good job on the offensive glass for the senior. He's got eight. It's Nioga within a tally, 23-22. Great inside outlook for the three that just rimmed out. But credit Sheehan got right into rebounding position and was able to put it back up and in. So the Bobcats with a single-digit lead, and again, nobody has led him by more than three points in this first half. Two and a half to go before the break. Wojcik with the ball coming around the screen, picks it up at the free throw line, gets it over to Evans, driving from the wing, reverse layup, hits the bottom of the rim, no good. But Clayton Wojcik, again, with the offensive rebound, the putback plus the foul, he has got 17 points, and he's going back to the free throw line. Now he's, like I said, he's kind of hanging around the basket more again. Read the situation, got the rebound, and got fouled. That foul on Letterly is now he's picked up a couple of quick ones. Wojcik completes the three-point play, makes the free throw, and now CHBC does have its biggest lead of the contest, 26-22. to The Oga ball, just over two minutes to go here in the second quarter. Ray drives in from the corner, kicks back out to Titus on the wing, back to Ray in the corner. They want to get it to Sheen in the paint. The entry pass was knocked away, but Ray picked it up. His layup driving the baseline is no good, but... There is Trenton, or Trey Sheehan, rather, with the offensive rebound, the second straight trip. He's gotten an offensive board, and he's fouled on the putback attempt. He'll shoot two. 
It's interesting, Nioga has more offensive rebounds than defensive rebounds in this ball game, And it's just kind of been the flow of it as that foul is whistled against number 12, Caden Callum. It'll be his first. And it's the fifth against CHBC here this quarter. So it was going to be two free throws regardless of whether Sheehan was in the act of shooting, which he was, and he makes the first free throw. 157 to go in the second quarter. He makes this one with getting Yoga back within two, but he doesn't. It rolls around the rim and off. No good. Lorton with the board for the Bobcat. So it is CHBC ball with a three-point lead. It is Wojcik walking it across. He has been the man of the first half. Over in the corner, that's Caden Callum. Now they dump it in. Nice. Good post entry oh, to Lorton. Missed the shot, but there is Wojcik with the offensive rebound on the weak side. The putback is good. 20 for him. Bobcats up five. Well, Lorton got his shot absolutely blocked in there by Bullock, but then again, Wojcik there to clean up the mess. It has just been an outstanding first half for the Bobcat senior. And he's got them up five. Nioga with the ball, 120 to go before halftime. Driving the baseline is literally throws it along the baseline to Ray in the opposite corner. He backs out and then drives. Oh, oh nice. you see a little layup for Gavin Ray. He's got five and gets Nioga back within three. Good move. He's come off the bench and been aggressive for Nioga and done a nice job. Well, and that's what Nioga needs, people who are aggressive on the offensive end. Driving in from the wing, though, misses the layup of Callum. He was hassled a little bit. But August Cosart comes away with the offensive rebound, and then he was fouled as he tried to clear it out of there. So Cosart doing a good job on the glass as that Neoga foul is their fourth, but it is Titus' second here in the ball game. Still nobody with more than two for Neoga, correct? Pass goes into the backcourt. Not on purpose for CHBC mm -hmm. as they inbounded on their own baseline, but uh, nobody from Yoga able to track it down. So it was Callum who went and got it. 47 seconds to go. CHBC with a three-point lead and the basketball. Somebody wants to play St. Anthony tomorrow. they got to win this game to do it. There's an open three-pointer in the corner, and that is knocked down by Caden Callum. Actually stepped out around the wing by the time he hit that one. He's got six. CHBC's biggest lead of the game is six, 31-25. Yoga has 25 seconds to try to answer before the break. But it's going to be a steal instead, taking it away to Slayton Wojcik, who took the ball away from uh, Letterly as he tried to throw a pass across uh, the top of the court. And uh, as the Wojcik was going to the rim on the other end, he was fouled. Three yeah. turnovers for Yoga. And all three of them steals by Wojcik out top. That's led to a couple of layups. And now this opportunity at the free throw line, as uh, that was the third foul on Letterly, by the way. So a couple of free throws for Wojcik. He's got 21 already. I should have been more economical about how I was writing his points on my sheet. Uh -huh. I'm going to run out of room here by the time this game's over with. He's got 21 as uh, Letterly takes a seat and Keller gets back in for Nioga. Wojcik, meanwhile, makes the two-for-two two trip. So he's got 22 points, and CHBC's biggest lead of the game is eight. 16 seconds for Nioga. Bullock has it out at the wing, gets it over in the corner to Keller, back out to Bullock. Eight seconds now. Bullock picks up his dribble at the at the wing. They skip it over to Titus. Titus pulled the trigger on a three with two seconds to go. Way too strong. Rebound comes down. August Cosart. He can't get down the floor or throw a heave or anything like that. But the Bobcats will take it. A good close to that second quarter. See CHBC open up its largest lead of the proceedings. They are ahead of Yoga by eight. 33 to 25. So we are officially underway at this 88th Annual National Trail Conference Boys Basketball Tournament. And it is the Bobcats who are winning the opening game at halftime. We will uh, go ahead and take a break. When we do, we'll take, uh, when we come back, we'll take a look at Matt's statistics from that uh, first half. We'll take a look at the quarter by quarter scoring in this game, and we will get you set for the rest of the evening's matchups. We still got Two more games to go, but again, here at halftime and your playing game, it is. Number eight, CHBC 33, number nine, Yoga 25. Back in 90 seconds here on 97.9 XFM. Since 1937, Geckner Brothers has been proud to support local and area teams, and that continues with this year's NTC tournament. Best of success area teams from the family at Geckner Brothers. Washington Savings Bank is here for you through every stage of life. We make banking easy and convenient. 
Heartland Human Services is proud to sponsor the NTC tournament. Your physical and mental health are similar. Take care of both for a happy, healthy life. If you've got a passion for helping others, apply today at heartlandhs.org. Video and audio streaming of the 2024 National Trail Conference Tournament is proudly presented by Premier Broadcasting, 97.9 XFM and KJ Country 102.3. Come see all the new and exciting Chevrolet and Toyota vehicles here at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, South Route 45 in Effingham, or shop and buy 24-7 at danheck.com. For over 30 years, SPS has been providing care to the surrounding area. Specializing in around-the-clock and hourly care, we focus on in-home and nursing home care. If you need help with your loved ones, call Mitchell or Sherry today at 217-690-3240. This is the Compass Advisory Group Halftime Show. For all of your insurance needs, contact Corey McDaniel at 347-9697. Halftime of the opening game of the National Trail Conference Tournament for 2024. It is the 88th annual NTC Boys Basketball Tournament, and it sees CHBC leading this playoff play-in game over Neoga by a 33-25 to margin. This was a tight game throughout the first quarter. CHBC and Yoga both had three-point leads in that first quarter, but it was the Bobcats who were up 14-11 to 11 after a quarter of play. But they outscored Yoga 19-14 to 14 to uh, take this 33-25 lead. Of course, the eight-point advantage, the biggest lead of the game for the Bobcats, and that's where we stand at halftime as the Altamont drum line as... It wouldn't be an NPC tournament without the drum line entertaining the crowd. And, Matt, uh, you got some team numbers from that first half of play? I sure do. Counting here at Beecher City, 11 of 20 from the field overall at 55%. 9 of 14 at the free throw line, 64%. And 2 of 5 from beyond the arc at 40%. The Oak is 11 of 19 from the field at 58%. 6 of 7 at the free throw line for 86%. And 1 of 6 from beyond the arc at 17%. Big advantages in the game for CHBC. 14 rebounds compared to Neoga's eight, and the turnover is pretty close. Uh, Neoga with four, but three of them in that second quarter that led to immediate opportunities for the Bobcats. Counting here at Feature City with just three, so ultimately a pretty clean game played by both of these teams when you look at the turnover margin. You look at what CHBC has been able to take advantage of, though, with those turnovers, even though there haven't been very many. That's kind of uh, the difference in the game right now is they lead by eight. It's 33-25. to 25. CHBC leads the yoga. We'll take a look at some individual numbers from that first half in a moment. But while we take another break, when we come back, we'll get those stats and we'll get you set for the rest of the night here at Altamont here on 97.9 at XFM. Thanks for watching the NTC Tournament, provided by Premier Broadcasting, 97.9 XFM and KJ Country 102.3. Diedrich Bank is proud to sponsor the NTC Tournament. Diedrich Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Tom Henderson State Farm Insurance helps people manage the risk of everyday life, recover from the unexpected, and help you realize your dreams. Contact Tom Henderson today. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. Hi, this is Kathy from Barlow Lock and Security. Secure your home or business with a customized system from us. Good luck, area teams in the tournament. Washington Savings Bank is here for you through every stage of life. We make banking easy and convenient. Heartland Human Services is proud to sponsor the NTC Tournament. Your physical and mental health are similar. Take care of both for a happy, healthy life. If you've got a passion for helping others, apply today at heartlandhs.org. Video and audio streaming of the 2024 National Trail Conference Tournament is proudly presented by Premier Broadcasting. Back at Altamont, 33-25, CHBC leads Neoga at halftime of the opening game of this 88th annual NTC Boys Basketball Tournament. 
Pat Robinson's got some of the individual statistics from that first half play ready to go. All right. Thank you very much, Dustin. And it starts with Clayton Wojcik. He is 8 of 10 from the field, made his first three shots, missed a couple, then made five in a row to end the first half. He's 8 of 10 overall, 6 of 8 from the free throw line, has 22 points and four offensive rebounds. Three points for Gage Lorton, 1 of 3 from the field, 1 of 2 at the free throw line with three rebounds. A.J. Radloff, 0 for 1 from the field, 1 of 2 at the free throw line with one point, two rebounds. Gaden Callum, 2 for 4 from the field. Both of his made shots were for beyond the arc. He has six points and a rebound. And Carson Evans is 0 for 1 from the field, 1 of 2 from the line. He has a point and a couple of rebounds. Wyatt Ruff, Wyatt Ruff is 0 for 1 from the field. And August Kosor has grabbed a couple of rebounds in his minutes for the Bobcats. And the Yoga Indians, James Bullock is 4 for 4 from the field, 2 for 2 at the free throw line. He has 11 points and a couple of rebounds. Landon Titus, the only shot he tried was right at the end of the second quarter as it looks like the Bobcats are really trying to limit his opportunities, and particularly from beyond the arc. Luke Keller committed a couple of fouls. He did uh, not have any other stats. Braden Letterly, 0 for 5 from the field with a rebound. Trey Sheehan, 3 for 4 from the floor, 3 of 4 at the free throw line. He has 9 points and 3 offensive rebounds. And Gavin Ray, a nice lift off the bench. He has 5 points on 2 of 5 shooting from the field, 1 of 1 at the line. He has a couple of rebounds as well. Carter Young with two fouls, Braden Letterly with three, Luke Keller with two, and Landon Titus with two for Neoga. Other side of the ledger, Count Herrick Beecher Cities, Wyatt Ruff has three, and A.J. Radloff with three. Nobody else with more than one for the Bobcats. And those are your individual numbers and a 33-25 halftime score with CHBC leading Neoga in the 8-9 matchup of this 88th Annual National Trail Conference Tournament. Thank you very much, Matt. Of course, whoever wins this will turn around at uh, not they'll, they'll play uh, they'll play St. Anthony tomorrow night. Uh, that is, of course, the number one seed in this tournament. And uh, they uh, whoever loses this one will play on Thursday night against the loser of the next game that's on our slate tonight. That's number two, Altamont, against number seven, Windsor Stu Strong. So that's a quarterfinal game that will be right after this one. And then, of course, wrapping up our evening tonight is number three, Dieterich, against number six, South Central. Those games were supposed to be Wednesday night on the original tournament schedule, but with yesterday's weather, those games will be tonight. And then the Tuesday games will be Wednesday. And, of course, the St. Anthony versus the winner of the CHBC Neoga game and number four, St. Elmo Brownstown versus number five, North Clay. Matt, why don't we go ahead and take one more quick 60-second break. When we come back, we will get set for the second half. Again, at halftime, it is CHBC 33, Neoga 25, NTC Tournament Basketball on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the new and exciting Chevrolet and Toyota vehicles here at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, South Route 45 in Effingham, or shop and buy 24-7 at danheck.com. Person-to-person money transfer. Easy, the way it should be. Learn more at CrossroadsBank.com. Crossroads Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Tom Henderson State Farm Insurance helps people manage the risk of everyday life, recover from the unexpected, and help you realize your dreams. Contact Tom Henderson today. Video and audio streaming of the 2024 National Trail Conference Tournament is proudly presented by Premier Broadcasting, 97.9 XFM and KJ Country 102.3. Well, CHBC up eight as we get ready to start this second half. Matt, uh, Yoga's going to have to figure out how to deal with Clayton Wojcik, aren't they? Well, and you, we talked about it off air, I guess, in the pregame show, but CHBC has a number of kids that have played in this tournament a lot over their career, and none more than Clayton Wojcik. He's been seeing action since his freshman year, and I think that experience is showing just a little bit here for the Bobcat senior as uh, it'll be their ball to start the third quarter. Yep, they get it in. To Caden Callum. It looks like they've got the starters back out on the floor. They throw a lob in. Clayton Wojcik. Oh. By the way, <laughs> another bucket for the 6'3 senior. He's got 24, and it's a 10 point advantage for the first time for the Bobcats. And the Bobcats are staying with this 1 3 1. It's been effective for them when they started it in the second quarter. 
That's the other thing for New York, 25 points at halftime. It's not a big number. And they got 11 out of a guy in James Bullock who doesn't generally score a lot. So you get that, but not much from anybody else. And so they got to figure some things out offensively as well. It's Bullock that has the ball on the wing right now. Gets it out top to Letterly. Letterly playing with three fouls for New York. Uh, over to Titus, tries to bounce punt, pass into the high post to Titus and gets bailed out on a foul call there. That was kind of a kind of a risky pass to throw. Yeah, it was right at the feet of Sheehan, and Sheehan made the catch, and then Wojcik saw the ball kind of loose, went for it, and got called for the reach. His second foul, team's first of the half. It wouldn't mind if Wojcik picked mm. up another quick one here in this third quarter. They get it into Sheehan, who has been playing against Wojcik, his little baseline jumper from eight feet is no good, and that one rims out to Gage Lorton with the rebound. CHBC walks it up. That's Wojcik with the ball on his two dozen points so far, just a minute into the second half. Bobcats have a 10-point lead. They are looking to run away in this game right now, and Yoga trying to keep it a ball game. They get it in, backing down is Gage Lorton, and for the second time tonight, he uh, shuffles the feet trying to back somebody down the post and gets called for the travel. I don't mind him trying to use his strength as an advantage in the post, but he just can't get the feet to cooperate as that's uh, just the first turnover of the quarter. He is a big, strong kid, mm -hmm. but uh, the footwork slowed him down a couple of times. Sheehan picks up at the free throw line, can't get a shot, throws it out to, to uh, Titus, who had a tough catch, allowed the defense to catch back up. Literally drives in on the corner. He's picked up. Ooh. Gets it out to Keller for an open three-pointer from the wing. And uh, Luke misses that one. Callum with a rebound for CHBC. He busted up the floor quickly. But they are picked up by the Neoga defense. And CHBC will set up their offense. Holding it is Wojcik. Dribbles back towards the center circle. Now gets it over on the wing to Callum. Callum holds. Now gets a screen. Goes to his right. Gets into the paint. Kicks it back out. Open three-pointer for Evans in the corner. Carson Evans' his first field goal of the game is a triple. He's got four in CHBC now, up by 13 here in the third quarter. Great penetration and kick, and the Bobcats might be putting this ball game away here in the third quarter. Well, now Nioga obliges as Trey Sheehan tried to throw it from the high post to, to uh, Titus, cutting to the rim, threw it over his head and out of bounds. The Nioga turnover. Andrew Snow, the Nioga coach, will get a timeout. 5.51 to go. It is CHBC 38, Yoga 25, NTC Tournament Basketball on 97.9 XFM. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. Person-to-person -person money transfer. Easy the way it should be. Learn more at CrossroadsBank.com. Crossroads Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Andrew Snow gets the timeout. He's seen his team get down by a baker's dozen, their biggest deficit of the game, and then they turn it over. Matt, you said CHBC is looking in position to uh, pull away in this ball game, and they're in prime position. Yeah, and the Oga's made a couple of changes out there as well. Carter Young into the ball game, trying to help out on the defensive end, and they've gone to some full court pressure. Yeah, Gavin Ray also gets in the game for the first time this half as they get it over to Wojcik on the wing, and he drives all the way to the rim. His shot, though, high off the glass, and then no good. Gavin Ray with the rebound, and then he's bumped as he brings it up the floor. Gage Lorton picks up a silly foul at midcourt. Lorton has his first foul. It'll be the Bobcats' second as a low chick proves he's human as he missed the shot. It was contested in there, and uh, Yoga came away with it. And I do want to amend my statement slightly. Maybe not a silly foul for Lorden, but might have gotten a little off balance as he saw that ball handler coming up behind him at midcourt. But nonetheless, bumped and picked up his first foul. Two for CHBC. Bullock trying to drive from the right wing, but this time CHBC says, you're not going to beat us that way in the second half like you did in the first half. And they tie Bullock up. The jump ball keeps it with the Indians. Well, that was a nice play by Lorton to get in position to force that jump. So, Bullock will inbound it out top to Titus. As Yoga does keep possession on the held ball. Get in the high post. Tracian er, misses the free throw line jumper, but the, ball, the rebound is batted back out to the top. And it's Titus who comes away with it. Great job by Ray to save that one. Now they get it over to Bullock. Drives in from the corner. Tips those along the baseline, almost goes out of bounds, but manages to keep it, gets it to Ray. Now it's going to be Titus with a long three-pointer from the wing. It's off the mark, no good, but there's an offensive rebound for James Bullock. 
He puts it up and in. He's got 13, and Yoga needed that basket big time. They're still down 11. That was a great rebound and then a great spin in traffic to find a spot to get the shot. So Wojcik holds out of the circle. The CHPC has the ball in the 11-point lead, approaching the midpoint of this third quarter. There's a tough jumper off the screen from Callum on the baseline. It's too strong off the back iron high and into the hands of Carter Young, who will bring it all the way up the floor, then feeds Bullock, who found his way to the rim. James Bullock has 15 points, and Nioga back within 9, 38-29. Well, it was a 5-0 start to the quarter since the timeout. Nioga scored four straight, so back and forth we continue to be. Yeah, Nioga can't afford a back and forth game, though. They're going to have to keep uh, going on a run here. CHBC, though, gets it down in there to Radloff. He wants to back down on Shin. Coming to the rim, that's Callum, who took the pass across the lane. His shot was off the mark, though, and now Bullock gets the defensive rebound and bring it up the floor himself. Thought about pulling up for a three, then decided to do it anyway. He wasn't in rhythm, though, yeah. and after Lorton got the rebound, Carter Young comes flying in and fouls him well after the rebound had been established. Carter picks up a third, and uh, that's the yoga's first. Yeah, 3.50 on the clock. Carter, I like his aggressiveness trying to get to the offensive board, but really didn't have a chance to do anything but foul, as it turned out. But... Under four minutes to go in the third quarter. That is just Yoga's first team mm-hmm. foul. It is Young's third, so he'll have to be mindful of that as he plays defense on Carson Evans right now to get it out top to Radloff. Dumps it in the post to Wojcik, then right back out to Evans. Evans hits a second three-pointer of the third quarter. He's up to seven points, and the lead back up to a dozen for the Bobcats. Inside post, outside to the shooter. And if you're wearing number three, you better guard him for him to be on the arc. Gavin Ray just about stepped out of bounds on the sideline, then tried to throw a pass back out top to Bullock, had it batted away momentarily, but then Yale Indians able to maintain possession. Tough shot for Bullock in the inside, no good. And Titus, put, his put back is no good. Then the rebound comes down to Radloff, who had it knocked away from him out of bounds. So Nioga, a couple of chances there, can't get anything to go. Now Bullock was a perfect six for six from the floor. Now he's missed his last two shots. CHBC wants a timeout. We'll take it with him. 3.03 to go in the third quarter. It's Cowden Herrick Beach City, 41. Yoga, 29. NCC Boys Basketball Tournament back in 30 seconds here on 97.9 XFM. Hi, this is Kathy from Barlow Lock and Security. Secure your home or business with a customized system from us. Good luck, area teams in the tournament. Video and audio streaming of the 2024 National Trail Conference Tournament is proudly presented by Premier Broadcasting, 97.9 XFM and KJ Country 102.3. Well, Clayton Wojcik got the inbound pass on one end of the floor, drove to the other end of the floor, attacked the basket, but Trey Sheehan able to stand his ground on the block and take the charging foul, and that's a turnover that Nioga needed to force right there. Yeah, with three minutes to go in the third quarter, it is Wojcik's third foul, something to keep an eye on. Not in trouble, but can't afford another one quickly here, as uh, Nioga would love to force him to the bench with foul trouble. Yeah, he's got 24 of their 41 points, but they lead Nioga by 12. He's trying to throw a pass around the defender with Landon Titus. The CHBC player left up and got a foot on it. Mm-hmm. So it'll be Letterly to inbound on the sideline. He'll throw it in the backcourt to Titus, swings it over to Bullock, and Yoga going to set up their offense. Get it to Ray in the corner, thought about a three, instead swings it back out to Bullock on the wing. Dribbles out top. He's thinking about it. No, he's covered up. Still holding the basketball. Had it knocked away, able to recollect it, reestablish the dribble, and get it over to Titus. He backs it out toward the center line. He picks up his dribble at the wing, bounces the high post to Young. Now on the baseline, it's Letterly. He spins around. He's out of sync. Gets it over for a wing three. That's Titus off the mark. No good. And the rebound comes down to Radloff for CHPC. He gets it to Evans. He'll go one end of the floor to the other. Missed the layup. Boy, a golden opportunity for him. Carter Young gets the rebound. He's hassled by Evans as he brings it up the floor. Lost the basketball. Then threw it away as he tried to recover. Picked up by Callum. He missed the shot. Then Wojcik missed an offensive rebound put back. And... Bullock gets the rebound, and he might have been fouled. We'll have to wait and see if it was Wojcik or Callum who fouled him, but up and down action, not not good basketball necessarily, but up and down action on that sequence. Well, there was a great block in there as Wojcik grabbed the rebound, and one of the Nioga players got up and blocked the shot. I believe it was Bullock. Could have been Titus. Either way, that foul is on Callum. So if it had been Wojcik, it would have been his fourth, but it's just Callum's second. 
and the team's fourth here in the third quarter. Titus lets the ball roll across midcourt, save a little bit of time. The yoga's down 12, but there's under two minutes to play in the third quarter, so they can use every extra second they can get. Trey Sheehan's back into the ball game. He had caught a breather there. Sheehan holds it on the corner right there, gets a high post to Young. Young bounces the pass out to Bullock. Thinking about the free throw nice. line jumper instead, dumps it down in the paint. Good pass to Trey Sheehan who gets it to go off the left glass. He's got 11. Yoga back within 10, 41-31. Bullock drawing attention as he should with how he scored tonight. And when that attention came to him, he found Sheehan underneath. Yeah, Sheehan's going to need to take the game over, I think, for Yoga. But uh, easier said than done, mm-hmm. of course. 10-point advantage for CHBC as they bounce pass out to A.J. Radloff. Now he gets it right back into Callum, goes into the rim, contested shot, comes back down into his hands. They'll reset the offense. Now the ball knocked loose and knocked out of bounds, as a matter of fact, and off of Trey Sheehan, who was doing some really uh, hard work there in the high post. Yeah, uh, Neoga is trying to ratchet up the defense a little bit, and it's forced to miss shot as Calvin Herrick Beecher City. They had three made shots early in the quarter, since then, they've missed six. It's uh, Wojcik with the ball right now, working on Landon Titus. Trying to go to the right baseline, spins back out. Open 18-footer, that's Radloff. It's no good. Rebound comes down to James Bullock. He's got a handful of boards for this New York team as well. 15 points, six rebounds. He brings it up the floor, picked up by Wojcik at the top of the key. Gets it over to Titus on the wing. He faked the three, now gets it back out to Bullock out top. He's, he works in, gets the Titus open for a three in the corner and missed everything. Way too strong, but good job by Gavin Ray to come up with that weak side rebound. Now gets it into Sheehan in the paint, and Trey Sheehan goes up against Radloff. Doesn't get the shot to go, but A.J. fouled him. Well, I've been nothing but impressed with Gavin Ray, who's come off the bench tonight as well for Neoga. That young man has provided some valuable minutes, got a nice rebound there, saved it into Sheehan, and Sheehan took it to the basket and got fouled, and that's A.J. Radloff's fourth personal and the team's fifth here in the third quarter. Sheehan with 11 points and a couple free throws coming up. Makes the first one. He's got a dozen now. He'll go back within nine. Letterly gets in for the Indians. He'll take the place of Young, I think. And then meanwhile, you have Radloff taking the seat for uh, the Bobcats. And they get uh, they got the rough back in the contest. Sheehan's second free throw, also good. He's got a two-for-two two trip, 13 for him. Yoga's closest has been in a while. It's an mm-hmm. eight-point game, under 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Bobcats hold for the last shot here as they're just walking it up the court. Wojcik gets it over to Callum, now high post. Holding it is Lorton, looking to get it to a teammate. <laughs> Eventually got it to mm-hmm. Evans. Uh, not real clean lean. Now they get it to, to Wojcik, and boy, it's a... Uh, it's a disjointed thing here. Under three seconds to go, Wojcik going to have to sell for a tough contested baseline jumper as the quarter ends. That's not at all what CHBC wanted. Sheehan did grab the rebound as the buzzer sounded, and Yoga gets it within eight. But still, after three quarters, CHBC has the same lead it had at halftime, eight points. It is the Cowden Herrick Beach City Bobcats 41, Yoga 33, eight minutes left to play in this play-in game of the 88th Annual National Trail Conference Boys Basketball Tournament. On 97.9 XFM. Heartland Human Services is proud to sponsor the NTC tournament. Your physical and mental health are similar. Take care of both for a happy, healthy life. If you've got a passion for helping others, apply today at heartlandhs.org. Video and audio streaming of the 2024 National Trail Conference Tournament is proudly presented by Premier Broadcasting, 97.9 XFM and KJ Country 102.3. Come see all the new and exciting Chevrolet and Toyota vehicles here at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, South Route 45 in Effingham, or shop and buy 24-7 at danheck.com. For over 30 years, SPS has been providing care to the surrounding area. Specializing in around-the-clock and hourly care, we focus on in-home and nursing home care. If you need help with your loved ones, call Mitchell or Sherry today at 217-690-3240. CHBC basketball to start the fourth quarter. They get it inbound and have it immediately knocked out of bounds. Now thrown into the backcourt by the Bobcats, tracking it down as Clayton Wojcik and his 24 points. He walks it up, thinks about a three-pointer. Did not take it to get it high post. The Lorton hands it off and now right back to Lorton. Now dumps it into the paint. 
too hot for Ruff to handle or else he would have had a layup. Then Lorton catches it, almost traveled again. Instead gets it out top to Carson Evans. Now back down to Lorton in the paint. And he just throws one up and gets it to go. Gage Lorton pretty much decided he was going to shoot on that possession. And he got the turnaround shot to go. He's got five. CHBC back up ten. Wasn't a pretty trip, but it was effective. Carter Young high post nice. gets it over hmm. to uh, Keller for a running for a runner. That one is no good. Trey Sheehan gets the offensive rebound, puts it back up and in, but the foul was on the floor, much to Trey's chagrin. Well, I'll tell you what, he grabbed the ball and shot it almost in one motion, but as he was grabbing the ball, he was being fouled. And that's Callum's third at team's first of the fourth quarter. Yoga gets it inbounded out top. Tough catch for, for Titus. Nice. And then a good feed from Young into the paint. That is Trey Sheehan with 15 points now. He got that one to go. Indians back with eight. Young's made two good passes at the start of this fourth quarter. Minute into the fourth quarter, CHBC with the ball on the eight-point advantage. Wojcik, a little quiet in that third quarter. He throws a pass out to a teammate along the wing, but uh, he was fouled in doing so by the Indians, which give you a chance to tell us how they shot in that third quarter, Matt. Both teams, three of 12 from the floor in that quarter, two of two for Nioga from the free throw line, no attempts for CHBC. The CHBC was two of two from the on the arc, Oh, a five for Yoga. Titus picked up the foul, but then out of the inbound, driving to the basket was the Bobcats, and a charging foul called. That's against mm-hmm. Clayton Wojcik, and that's number four for him. The turnover. He's going to stay in the game as Russ comes out, and Radloff gets into the game for CHBC. But that's two players on the floor for them now with four fouls. I tell you what, I attack Wojcik, and if it costs me a turnover, so be it. I maybe try to get him out if I'm Yoga. Yeah, I mean, he's, again, scored 24 points tonight. He just does so many things for him as well, like tip passes. Like he just did there, and Yoga able to recover. Skips it over to Keller. Open three-point on the wing. That one's high off the rim, no good. But Trey Sheehan with the offensive rebound, put back no good. But Caden Callum, I think, is the man who hacked him on the shot at him. Well, Sheehan has found rebounding opportunities because of this 1-3-1 zone. He comes in against the smaller player playing on the bottom of the zone and uh, is able to to draw another foul. That's Callum picking up his fourth. Sheehan's first free throw is good. Gives him 16. He now leads Neoga. James Bullock has been their leading scorer most of the night. Trey Sheehan's first free throw gets the Indians within seven. He's got one more. It is also good. Two for two trip for Trey. 17. Neoga's close as they've been in a while. It's 43-37. The HBC still with the lead, though, and the basketball is Clayton Wojcik. Brings it across midcourt. He has got Titus guarding him. He picks it up a long way away from the basket. Tough pass on the wing. Catching it as Callum and Coach Tanner Thompson for CHPC says, we need to talk. 6-10 to go in the fourth quarter. The Bobcat lead down to six. It's 43-37. CHPC over Nioga. Back in 60 seconds here on 97.9 XFM. Thanks for watching the NTC Tournament, provided by Premier Broadcasting, 97.9 XFM and KJ Country 102.3. Diedrich Bank is proud to sponsor the NTC Tournament. Diedrich Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Tom Henderson State Farm Insurance helps people manage the risk of everyday life, recover from the unexpected, and help you realize your dreams. Contact Tom Henderson today. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Keller Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. Sixty-six fifty-five. Franchises are independently owned and operated. Six ten to go here in the play-in game of the NCC tournament. It is number eight CHBC leading number nine Nioga forty-three thirty-seven. But the Bobcats have been up by as many as thirteen in this game. Matt Nioga has cut it down a little bit. Yeah, they cut it down to six, and they're trying to play the good defense again. That's that's kind of forced CHBC into some tougher looks. Well, in CHBC was a number of players and a little bit of foul trouble, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what Nyoga does offensively, but the stop is the first thing here. Is Hornets are working against this Nyoga man-to-man, and right now they haven't gotten it inside the three-point arc yet. And I don't think they're trying to. I think they're trying to milk a little clock here 
save some of those players with foul situations and work for a good one. Get it over in the corner. Not a clean catch for Radloff. I don't know if he was planning on shooting anyway. Now they swing it back out top. That's Callum working on Letterly. Drives in. Tough shot. Mm. That one's off the side of the rim. No good. And the rebound comes down to Letterly. So good job defensively from Yoga once the Hornets decided to attack. Indians could get within four or even three on this trip. Trey Sheehan holds it out at the wing. Gets it over to Letterly in the corner. Letterly looking. Looking. Dribbles out to the wing. Now gets it to Sheehan out top over to, to uh, Titus on the corner, and he'll bring it back out top. High post, that's get, uh, Young. Carter Young lobs the pass in to Keller, cutting to the rim. It was too high for him. Went off of the backboard, then out toward the wing, off of a red jersey, then off of a white jersey, and ultimately out of bounds to Neoga. Yeah, Callum tried to tap, tap it away from the Neoga player, ultimately tapped it out of bounds before he could get to it. Literally takes the seat. James Bullock gets in for Neoga. He will inbound on the sideline on their end of the floor. Gets it into Young. Nobody picks him up after he catches it, so he decides to take a three. He missed it, and the rebound is knocked away. Evans has it. Evans took to, uh, his running the floor. A little two-man game, and the fast-break bucket is good for Wojcik, plus the foul against Nioga. That is about the last thing the Indians needed right there. I tell you what, it was a good play by Evans to get to that rebound and immediately take it up the court. Looked like Nioga was going to be able to grab the rebound at the top of the key, mm-hmm. but Evans locked it up court, got it to Wojcik. Wojcik got fouled from behind by Bullock, who commits his second personal. Yeah, bounced right at the feet of Titus, who didn't attack it very uh, aggressively, and so Evans able to make something happen. Wojcik does miss the free throw, but there is the offensive rebound for Radloff. So now CHBC up eight, and they have the ball. Four and a half minutes to go in this game. Thinking about the three was Evans. Now passes it up and gets to Wojcik. Back out to to Callum, and now out top is Evans with it. High post holding it is Radloff. Now to Callum. They're just working it around the perimeter as it's in the hands of Wojcik now. Back to Radloff. Radloff working against Young, who's right up in his grill. Nioga does have two team fouls already, but they can be pretty aggressive here. Mm. Doesn't matter. CHPC tried to throw it over to Evans in the corner, and it was off the mark. Second Bobcat turnover, and Yoga will take it. Rare mistake there. Wojcik drove into the lane, and just the pass was off target. Looked like he was a little off balance when he tried to make that pass. 4.07 to go in this fourth quarter. Yoga basketball, they're down eight. Sheehan mm. tried to throw it from the high post to a cutting young but that ball was knocked out of bounds on the sideline by the Bobcats, so Young will inbound it over there. Nice job of Lorton by dropping down there to bat that ball away. Yoga gets it inbound. That's Titus. Dribbles it out top. Now gets it to Bullock out there. Bullock dribbles into the wing. Now looking to kick back out. Titus with an open three-pointer. Titus is off the mark, and that rebound comes down to Lorton. He's going to take it all the way down the floor, and nobody stopped the dribble. Doesn't get much easier than that. Gage Lorton goes three-quarter court for his seventh points of the game, and he gets CHBC back up 10 because the Bobcats didn't knock the ball loose. They're just being more aggressive here down the stretch of this game. Well, and they, they're up by 10. They've got that opportunity, and now Nioga is going to take a timeout. Nioga will take the 60-second timeout. We will take it with him. 3.37 to go here at Altamont. It's CHBC 47, Nioga 37, NCC Tournament Basketball on 97.9 XFM. Hi, this is Kathy from Bartle Lock and Security. Secure your home or business with a customized system from us. Good luck, area teams in the tournament. Video and audio streaming of the 2024 National Trail Conference Tournament is proudly presented by Premier Broadcasting, 97.9 XFM and KJ Country 102.3. Since 1937, Geckner Brothers has been proud to support local and area teams, and that continues with this year's NTC Tournament. Best of success area teams from the family at Geckner Brothers. Washington Savings Bank is here for you through every stage of life. We make banking easy and convenient. Yoga's ball to inbound, 3.37 to go in this game, and they trail CHB. It's time for high school basketball on your local sports leader. Classic hits. Not e- and a good spin move there as he was working on A.J. Radloff, went to the rim, made the bucket. 
get the over within eight, and he'll have a chance for the three-point play. And I do believe, Matt, is that that was Radloff with the foul. It was Gage Lorden. Was it Lorden? Okay. They whistled number 22 with his second personal, and it's the fourth on CHBC. Sheehan makes the free throw, completes the three-point play. I got him with 20 now, and it's Neoga back within seven. 3.24 to go in the contest. CHBC with the basketball. Get it over in the corner. That's Callum bringing it back out to the wing. On the opposite wing, it's Evans with it. Hasn't dribbled yet. Carter Young stands up there trying to knock it away from him. As the Yoga's got fouls to give, they're just trying to create a turnover. They get called mm-hmm. for a hack. So what? But so far, no success in either way. As we get down to three minutes to go, CHPC just kind of working the basketball around against some yoga pressure extended away from the basket. Now picking it up is Wojcik. He was in a bit of a dangerous spot there. Gets it on the opposite wing to Radloff. Back out top. Now they swing it to Radloff again on that wing. He's just playing catch with Evans. A little bit of a triangle game between those two and Gage Lorton mm-hmm. over here on the left side of the court. They're just milking the clock and doing a good job of it. Down to 2.39 to go. Nioga finally fouls. That's going to be their third team foul of the quarter. I believe it's going to be on number 12, James Bullock. It'll be his third and the team's third. But like you say, DHBC has done a good job of taking care of the ball tonight. Only seven turnovers in this game, and I think three of them are offensive fouls by Wojcik when you throw that in there. Absolutely. Mm. But CHBC, after that good ball movement before the foul, Throws it away after they get it inbound on their side of the court. Pass goes out of bounds. Third Horn, or uh, Bobcat turnover. And Yogo will get it back with two and a half to go. Big possession for the Indians. They are down seven. Titus with it right now. Throws it over to Bullock on the wing. But uh, that pass was tipped and out of bounds off of a CHBC player. Callum saying, hey, or Evans is saying that was off of Bullock after I hit it. <laughs> the officials didn't buy it. He might. I it don't was know. close. It was close enough to try and mm-hmm. try and sell it, but the Indians keep it. They got it to Trey Sheehan on the baseline. Now he's cut off. Gets it over for a deep three for Titus. Titus misses, but a good rebound on the strong side to Sheehan. Across the lane, short jumper is good for Carter Young. His first two points of the game are huge for the Indians. They're within five, two minutes to go. Now Young gets called for the foul. As he is hassling Evans on his way up the sideline, and that is the fourth team foul from Yoga, and Young's fourth. Yeah, but uh, with... Two minutes, essentially, in the ball game. They are going to take Young out, who's played a good second half, as Letterly will come back in for him. So just under two minutes to go. CHBC will inbound the ball in the backcourt. That is Wojcik with it. He beats Titus up the floor, picks it up at the top of the key, gets it over on the wing to Callum. Callum gets it back to Wojcik, driving to the basket, though, and Clayton Wojcik gets the quick score. He's got 28 and CHBC back up seven with 140 to go. Look little give and go there, and Wojcik finished. So, Nyoga basketball, they need points, and they need them quick. Probably quicker than this. Literally now drives from the wing. Back out to Sheehan. Elbow jumper. That one is way short, but there's Ray with the weak side rebound, able to pull that one up and put it back up and in. Gavin Ray has got seven, and Yoga gets the quick timeout. 126 to go in this contest. We'll take a 30-second break. It's the HBC 49, Yoga 44. High School Basketball from the NTC Tournament on 97.9 XFM. Heartland Human Services is proud to sponsor the NTC Tournament. Your physical and mental health are similar. Take care of both for a happy, healthy life. If you've got a passion for helping others, apply today at heartlandhs.org. Video and audio streaming of the 2024 National Trail Conference Tournament is proudly presented by Premier Broadcasting, 97.9 XFM and KJ Country 102.3. 86 seconds of basketball left. Yoga five. trails <laughs> CHBC by 5, 49-44. It is going to be CHBC basketball coming out of that Neoga timeout. One long ago it was 10, but now it's 5. Neoga's continuing to fight here. Big defensive possession for the Indians. Big possession for CHBC. If they can get a bucket, they're in good shape. They get it into the hands of Clayton Wojcik, busting it up the floor, and Neoga decides to foul him. That will put him at the free throw line as both teams are in the bonus here. Yeah, so it'll be a couple of free throws now for Wojcik. It's that foul whistled on Titus, his fourth, team fifth. And a couple of free throws for Wojcik, who's been all right at the line as uh, he is 6 of 9 thus far. Missed the first one. And that's Nyoga 
If you're in yoga, that's what you need. You just can't have a two-for-two trip if you're trying to play this game. As Letterly comes out, Carter Young and his four fouls get back in there. So Young and and Titus both playing with four for Nioga. Nobody's fouled out of this game, but there's lots of people Mm -hmm. (laughs) with four. As the second free throw is also short for Wojcik, and the short rebound comes down to Young. Young gets it to Sheehan in the post. Cutting into the paint is Ray, but he can't make the clean catch. Has to throw it back out to Young. Now Titus thinks about the wing three and stick it down in the paint to Sheehan. Back out to, to Bullock. Driving into the paint, Bullock. His layup is good. James Bullock has 17. Yoga within three, exactly a minute to go. Knocked away from CHBC momentarily, but they get it to Or No, that is actually Wojcik and missed the layup. Missed the layup. Titus with a rebound. Yoga could tie potentially. They're down three with 47 seconds to go. Bullock with it. Gets it out to Titus. Titus thinks about the three, thinks better of it. Young at the top of the key. He'll take a three. It's off the side of the rim. No good. But Gavin Ray gets his hand on the rebound, got the position, and he was fouled by Caden Callum as he came away with it. And, again, we are in the bonus. So Gavin Ray is going to go to the free throw line for two. Again, a good hustling. Ray grabbed his fifth offensive rebound, seventh in the game, goes to the line, and that is the fifth foul on Caden Callum. So one of the ball handlers, one of the experienced players for the Bobcats, heading to the bench. So Gavin Ray with a chance to get Yoga within two if he can make both of his free throws. It's a 49-46. 36.3 seconds to go. Ray's first free throw is nothing but net. Man. He's got eight before he can shoot the second. Tanner Thompson, the CHBC coach, calls a timeout. 36.3 seconds to go. We're down to a two-point game. CHBC 49, Yoga 47. Back in a minute here on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the new and exciting Chevrolet and Toyota vehicles here at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, South Route 45 in Effingham, or shop and buy 24-7 at danheck.com. For over 30 years, SPS has been providing care to the surrounding area. Specializing in around-the-clock and hourly care, we focus on in-home and nursing home care. If you need help with your loved ones, call Mitchell or Sherry today at 217-690-3240. Thanks for watching the NTC Tournament, provided by Premier Broadcasting, 97.9 XFM and KJ Country 102.3. Diedrich Bank is proud to sponsor the NTC Tournament. Diedrich Bank. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. And there's just 36.3 seconds left. The Ray could make it a one-point game. And if you're Neoga, play aggressive defense. If you foul, you foul and take your chances would be almost be my attitude. Absolutely. No matter if he makes or misses this one. So Ray, one more free throw. He could get the Indians within a point. Dribbles a couple times, spins the ball, dribbles two more, puts it up. It's off the back iron, no good. The rebound gets oh. into the hands of Landon Titus, but then tracked down by Carson Evans as it came loose, and Yoga fouls right away. They went and got Gage Lorton, who came away with the basketball after the Evans rebound, and with 29.8 seconds to go, we'll walk to the other end of the floor and shoot a couple of free throws on the CHPC end, and somehow somebody just picked up their first foul of this game. Yeah, and it's Trey Sheehan. He's been out there essentially all night long with a couple of moments of rest. But Gage Lorton going to the line, win a two-point game. Lorton with seven points today and makes the first of two free throws. Gets CHBC back up by three. Another one makes it a two-possession game for sure. 29.8 seconds to go. Lorton averages 10 points a game, and he's got nine here as he goes two for two at the line. Big shot. 51-47, under 30 seconds to go. Nyoga has to hurry, and James Bullock gets an open three-pointer on the wing. It hits the foot of a player after it comes mm-hmm. off the rim. It was a Nyoga player. goes out of bounds on the sideline in front of the Nyoga bench, and CHBC will get the ball. I almost wonder if Bullock was surprised how open he was because they just pushed it up the court, and he caught it on the wing, and there was just nobody there. But he didn't make the shot, and it's off of Nioga. 22 seconds to go. They get it inbounded to Wojcik. Wojcik in the backcourt, gets it across midcourt, gets it in the hands. No, throws it ahead to a teammate, knocks it loose. Really recovering is, is rough. Now Nioga finally has the foul. They let a ton of time run off the clock there as it was almost kind of a bad pass up the court. Mm-hmm. Almost worked in THPC's yeah. favor to run a little bit more time off the clock. Yeah, because Nioga's thinking, we got a chance to get the ball here, and then they just could never get it. And then finally, Lorton 
received it after a pass, and he got fouled quickly by, uh, excuse me, by Bullock, his four. Thornton continues to come up clutch at the mm-hmm. free throw line here. He makes the first of the pair. CHBC up five now. Carter Young gets back in for Braden Leatherly for Nioga. Another huge free throw coming up for the CHBC senior. He's had a good fourth quarter. He does leave that one strong off the back iron. Bullock with a rebound. He's rushing it up the floor with six seconds to go. Makes a pass to Ray. Long three-pointer from the top. That one's short. Sheehan gets the rebound and puts it up and in. He's got 22 points. Yoga calls a timeout, but there's only six-tenths of a second to go, and they're still down by three. CHBC will be able to inbound the ball. They might put a little more time on the clock. The officials are talking, so uh, we'll see what happens there. It is a three-point game, uh, 52-49, and the official, Tim Leasy, is headed to the scorer's table. We've talked enough, and we're in pretty good shape here. It is a 60-second timeout, but we'll keep it here. 1.3 1.3 seconds left on the clock now as they do put a little more time on there but still I mean if you're in yoga you all you got to force a you got to force you got to force a turnover and get a three-pointer off all in 1.3 seconds unless CHBC fouls you in the act of shooting I guess yeah you, you ultimately are trying to go for a five second call but each team in my book has a timeout left so we'll keep an eye on that too Theoretically, if Yoga does steal it clean, they can call timeout instantly to set something up. But, boy, that would be a lot to do in 1.3 seconds. The free throws from Gage Lorton, huge, huge. in this fourth quarter. He made just in, he made enough to, to keep it here. So inbounding it is Evan. Gets it into the hands of Wojcik. Somebody had a handful of his jersey as he caught that pass. He, the foul was whistled before time expired off the clock. Mm-hmm. So they are going to have to put a little bit left on there. Young man wheeling the balls out there for the next teams to warm up is going to have to hold his horses, and they'll put three-tenths of a second on the clock. They open the curtain for the band to play. They'll close the curtain mm-hmm. <laughs> and let Clayton Wojcik shoot a couple of free throws here, but CHBC is going to win this hard-fought play-in game. Yeah, it would be a minor miracle, a major miracle, really. Uh, yeah, it would be, I think, a major. I mean, I guess it depends on... You'd have to catch a rebound. He has to miss the first, miss the second. You catch a rebound and heave at the length of the court all in one motion. Well, here's why these free throws are huge. 30 sounds a lot better than ah. And I jinxed him. I'm sorry, Clayton. He misses the first of two free throws. He'll have to settle for 29 if he can make this one. But again, with three-tenths of a second left, CHBC leads by three. Clayton Wojcik, 28 points, lines up the second free throw. It's good. A one-for-two trip for him, and THPC is going to win this game by four points. He from Landon Titus is no good. It would not have mattered. Time expires, and THPC is your winner. The Bobcats led this game by as many as 13 points, but they had to hang on down the stretch. They hold off the yoga, and it is the eighth-seeded Bobcats picking up the 53-49 to win over Nyoga. Yoga outscored them 16-12 to 12 in the fourth quarter, but it wasn't quite enough. The CHBC will play St. Anthony in the quarterfinals tomorrow night. Yoga will have to turn around and play the loser of the upcoming game between Altamont and Windsor Stews Draws. That's a chance to stay alive in the consolation bracket for the Yoga Indians. So a great first game to get this 88th Annual National Trail Conference Boys Basketball Tournament underway, but we've got two more for you. Coming up, it's going to be number two, Windsor Stew Straws against number or number two Altamont against number seven Windsor Stew Straws. But not before we have a chat with both of the coaches from that first game, a look at Matt stats, and a chance to get ready for the next contest. So why don't we go ahead and take a break? When we come back, we'll do a post game show and then another pre game show as part of your triple header here of National Trail Conference Boys Basketball. Again, your final in the first game. It was CHBC fifty three, Yoga forty nine. Back in a minute and a half here on 97.9 XFM. Thanks for watching the NTC Tournament. Provided by Premier Broadcasting, 97.9 XFM and KJ Country 102.3. Tom Henderson State Farm Insurance helps people manage the risk of everyday life, recover from the unexpected, and help you realize your dreams. Contact Tom Henderson today. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. 
Hi, this is Kathy from Barlow Lock and Security. Secure your home or business with a customized system from us. Good luck, area teams, in the tournament. Washington Savings Bank is here for you through every stage of life. We make banking easy and convenient. Heartland Human Services is proud to sponsor the NTC Tournament. Your physical and mental health are similar. Take care of both for a happy, healthy life. If you've got a passion for helping others, apply today at heartlandhs.org. Video and audio streaming of the 2024 National Trail Conference Tournament. This is the Farm Credit Illinois post-game show. Farm Credit Illinois, assisting farmers for over 100 years. Well, one game in the books, one of 14 at this 88th Annual National Trail Conference Boys Basketball Tournament. We got started with a farm burner. It looked like it was going to be that way as CHBC had leads by, of as many as 13 points in that contest, but it was the Bobcats holding off the yoga. 53 to 49 so the number eight seeded bobcats advance number nine yoga falls into the consolation side of the bracket they will play either altamont or windsor stews draws next uh it was a back and forth first quarter 14 to 11 was the chbc lead after a period of play uh, both teams had leads of as many as three points in that first quarter but then chbc pulled a little bit pulled away a little bit in that second quarter Got it up by as many as eight. In fact, the eight points was their largest lead of the second half. That's what they led by at halftime, 33-25. to 25. Teams played to an 8-8 tie in the third quarter, so it was 41-33. Bobcats still up eight after three quarters. Yoga got it all the way down to, to you know, they got within uh, two or three, was it, Matt, uh, in that uh, two for a two? I'm thinking. Yeah, they got within two in that fourth quarter, outscored. CHBC 16 to 12 in the fourth quarter, but ultimately it was the Bobcats who held off for a four-point win. They will advance to play St. Anthony tomorrow night, the top-seeded Bulldogs, uh, in the quarterfinal round of this NTC tournament. So they are going to play the Bulldogs. Uh, Matt, uh, got some team numbers from that first half of play? I can give you all the stats. Oh, down in Herrick Beecher City was 18 of 38 from the field at 47%. 13 of 23 at the free throw line, 4 of 9 in the fourth quarter, doing just enough there to hang on at 57%. They were also 4 of 7 from the three-point arc at 57%. Rebounds almost ended up dead even. Yoga 29, CHBC 25, actually, as Yoga out-rebounded them by 4. And CHBC just 8 turnovers in the game. Yoga only 5 in the ball game. Great numbers there. But Neoga was 19 of 43 from the field at 44%, 1 of 15 from three-point land. That was a big difference. And they were 12 of 14 at the free throw line at 86%. So a lot of good things for Neoga just fell short here, losing by four. Individually, Clayton Wojcik of 11 of 17 from the field, 7 of 13 at the free throw line, five rebounds, all of them offensive, and 29 points. Six points from Carson Evans on two of four shooting. He had five rebounds. Six from Caden Callum, two of nine from the field with three rebounds. A.J. Radloff, 0 for 2 from the field, 1 of 2 at the line, five rebounds and a point. Gage Lorton, he finished with six pins in this ball game and five rebounds. Wyatt Ruff was 0 for 1 from the field, and August Koser grabbed two rebounds for his total in this one. The Neoga Indians finished up being led by Trey Sheehan. He was 7 of 11 from the field. And Sheehan finished with 27 in this ball game as he was 8 of 9 at the 22, sorry, 22, as he was 8 of 9 at the free throw line with 8 rebounds. Also, James Bullock had a great night. 7 of 11 from the field, 2 of 2 at the free throw line. He finished with 17 in this one and 7 rebounds. Landon Titus was 0 for 6 from the field with a couple of rebounds. Uh, also, Luke Keller 0 for 2 from the field. Braden Letterly was 0 for 5 from the field with a couple of rebounds. Starter Young, 1 for 2 from the field, 2 points. And Gavin Ray came off the bench, 3 of 6 from the field, 2 of 3 at the free throw line. 7 rebounds in this one as he finished with 8 points. And Dustin has Coach Snow 
for the post-game interview. Yes, uh, New York coach Andrew Snow, nice enough to join us after a hard-fought game. I mean, got down double digits early, but you got to be proud of the way that your boys fought back in that second half, Coach. Uh, yeah, always always two ways to look at that. You don't have to fight hard. You don't have to fight back real hard if you don't put yourself in that position, but like I said, we could have we could have laid over, but they didn't. They, they kept battling and finally started playing at the pace we needed to play at. We didn't play at the pace we needed to play at the start again. You and I talked before the game, you know, about how you're looking for other people to step up the scoring, and so if I told you before this game started that James Bullock is going to go out there and score you 17 points, you'd say, I like my chances to get a win here tonight. I mean, he stepped, I mean, especially in the first half, he really stepped up for you guys and, and kept that a good ball game. Yeah, no, that was huge. We, I looked at James for the locker, for, for the, in the locker room for the game. I said, man, if you can score 10 points tonight, I like our chances. Because like you said, my exact words to him, he came out ready to go. And then the other guys that usually pitch in a couple were, I don't know the totals, but. We, we couldn't find five consistent guys out there tonight. You got the open looks from three-point yeah. range. It just wasn't falling for you tonight. I didn't feel like a lot of bad three-pointers were taken, yeah. though. It's just... <laughs> uh, yeah, we had the, right, had the right guys shooting them. Uh, Titus has been a three-point shooter for us this year. Keller's knocked down a few. Carter had a real good luck there at the end. But, uh, yeah, one of those nights where it doesn't go in, but it's not a very good excuse. And I also thought that, I mean, both teams took care of the basketball tonight. You didn't have a big number of turnovers but there was that one stretch in the second quarter where uh, Wojcik had two or three steals and turned them all into breakaway buckets. That takes a two-point game and turns it an eight-point game at halftime, and that's just a little more right. of a comeback you have right. to make. Yeah, no, we wouldn't have buried, us, buried ourselves there in that little stretch. You know, we would have been in better shape. But yeah, we I don't know what what was what changed. They ran the same uh, zone defense against all night, but a couple times we just looked shocked. You know, when guys were in the passing lane there, but. We just can't let stack those up. Like you said, he had a few of them back-to-back. We can handle one here and there, but two or three in a row, it hurts you. Trey Sheehan got you 22 tonight, and he's, you know, he's been reliable for you as far as scoring the basketball. Your only double figure as far as averages go, but uh, also the guy that gets keyed on a lot of times, and, and he still finds his way to get points. Like tonight, he bounces yeah. and put back. He'll score you a lot of dirty points over the course of a game. Yeah, no, he's... And when you put him in the middle against the zone there, he's a good passer. We just struggle to get him the ball at times. That when he when he is open at the high post or the block, and it's not from guys guards being selfish, it's just, I don't know, maybe a little timid to make the pass. I thought when we got Carter Young in the game there in the first quarter, he did a real nice job of passing. I mean, he's fearless. He'll throw a pass, and he made some good passes. Got Trey open and got him moving a little bit. Well, speaking of guys off the bench, Carter Young, and then Gavin Ray, I thought, came into this game and gave you some good injury, or, uh, energy. You know, a lot of good weak side rebounding yeah. for you, keeping possessions alive. Yeah, no, that's what we love with uh, Gavin and Carter there. They're sparks. They both come in and play fearless, both quick athletes that make us kind of help us play at a little better pace. And I thought they both did a pretty good job tonight. So the thing about this tournament, you know, you do you, you drop into that constellation side of things, but you you look at, uh, you know, I really look at the, this conference and, and I see that side of the bracket and what the matchups might be. I mean, there's still plenty of chances for you guys to put to put together some wins, and that's got to be the focus going into the rest of the week. Yeah, no, we're, we're going to practice in tomorrow and then uh, regroup and see who we end up getting and go from there. I mean, the way we talked at the seed meeting, I mean, anywhere five through nine, I think guys are pretty evenly matched. It's going to come down to are you going to hit shots? You know, that's a good Cowden team. Mm-hmm. Coach Thompson deserves a lot of credit. Those guys have gotten so much better. I feel like Wojcik and Radloff and those guys have been playing for four or five years now. But they, they've done a good job. He's done a great job with them. They play hard, and they, they've done well. The well, coach will be looking forward to seeing your guys the rest of the week. Uh, hopefully for you, you're able to get uh, get a couple more games in there. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to whatever we get to see in the rest of the season. I know, you know, it's uh, high school kids, man. They can they can turn the corner at any time. Absolutely. And yeah. the hope has to be for you that uh, this is this week in front of this on this stage is when they can do it. Yeah, no, we, we've got great kids. That's what makes this little maybe what we're struggling with right now is so easy you got great kids they're coachable they'll all be there tomorrow ready to go and ready to work on what we need to work on and as a coach that's that's what you want well we appreciate you taking the time we got uh, coach thompson from chbc waiting in the wings we got more basketball to broadcast but coach snow thanks for taking thanks, the time and we'll see you the rest of the week appreciate it all right that's coach andrew snow from yoga nice enough to give us a few minutes of his time he exchanges handshakes with Coach Tanner Thompson of CHBC. We'll get him all saddled up. 
Coach, uh, congratulations on getting that win today. It's always nice to start the tournament off with a victory. Yes, thank you very much. Um, that was honestly the first time that in my four years that we have won a game in this tournament. So it, it felt good, and the boys were excited, and I couldn't be more happy for them. You guys, uh, it was a tight game in the first quarter, but you had you had a little stretch there. Neither team turned it over a lot, but you were able to take advantage of a few yoga miscues and turn a tight game into an eight-point lead at halftime. And listen, those points ended up being very important down the stretch. They made a comeback that you were able to hold on. But really, big buckets made in that second quarter, I thought. Oh, yeah, definitely. I thought uh, when we got away a little bit, uh, I was like, okay, we're going to start our little run, you know. And, you know, credit Neoga. Andrew does a heck of a job there. Those boys, you know you had a ball game. They don't give up. And they're well coached. They do good. But you're right. I think being able to um, get those points in that second quarter, that really, really helped a lot. And then had a good opening sequence in the third quarter. Got up yeah. by as many as 13. Obviously needed a Again, Clayton Wojcik gets you 29 points tonight. We got we to gotta start with him. Uh, he was, I mean, especially in that first half, he was just a force. Uh, he, a lot was. Different ways. he was. He was. It was fun to watch. Um, we've been telling him, you know, you need to be a little bit more selfish with the basketball. You know, don't be too selfish, but don't be afraid to take a shot and he's finally starting to come out of that shell a lot more and and do what we know that he can do and, and you've got a team that's got four guys all you know right around you know 10 12 points yeah. and so opposing teams don't know exactly who they can focus on for you it's got to be you, you get into a game find out the matchups and then see who is who's hot that night and that, and that was him tonight, and he just kept taking it, like you said. Yes, exactly. It does help when you can get four or five guys out there that, you know, well, if this guy's not on, this one will be. If he's not, then so on. That helps out a ton, and um, we're just very fortunate. I'm proud of him. And you took good care of the basketball tonight. Yep. Neither team had very many turnovers. I thought that was great. And then able to navigate – some fouls that stacked up. I mean, at a certain point, you had to be looking at that thinking, you know, who are we going to still have in the stretch run yeah. of this game? But really kept almost everybody in the game by the time it was all said and done. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I was, uh, you look up there, and I think, well, Clayton had four, uh, Callum fouled out, and then A.J. Radloff, he had four. But, um, you know, that's where, like, August Cozart name comes in. That kid, you can put him in a game. It don't matter if it's a one-point lead. One point deficit. He doesn't get nervous. Um, that kid helps us out a ton, and he'll get in there and rebound too. And Gage Lorton made some big free throws. Yeah, stretch. Yes, big big time free throws, and it helps you salt away a win. Of course, now you got to play St. Anthony, and that's you know, but that's the challenge, right? The, yeah, that, that's the fun of the tournament is you don't have to go very far before you know you've been in a battle. Exactly, and you know. We're excited. I know a lot of kids, teams, they're like, why? You're excited. But we want another shot at them. Um, I like our chances. A lot of people may not like our chances, but I believe in my basketball team, and uh, we're going to come ready to play. Well, I have no doubt about it after seeing you tonight. Coach Tanner Thompson, we appreciate you taking the time, and we'll talk to you later on this week. Congratulations on the win. Thank you very much. It means a lot. Have a good one. All right. That is Coach Tanner Thompson from CHBC, victorious Bobcats. They get the win over Nioga, 53-49. to 49. So listen, the other, we've got two more games to bring you here, and we'll get you set for those in just a minute. It's uh, number two, Altamont, and number seven, Windsor Stu Straw is getting warmed up out on the court. Why don't we go ahead and uh, take a break here? When we come back, we'll get you set for that second of three matchups here as we are in the middle of a triple header of NTC boys basketball here on 97.9 XFM. Thanks for watching the NTC Tournament, provided by Premier Broadcasting, 97.9 XFM and KJ Country 102.3.